Hallelujah. Amen and amen, brothers and sisters. The Lord is good. His mercies endure forever. And that mercies of the Lord that endure forever also includes what he does for us that we are not even aware and what he does for us that is in the world already. And we are talking about this adversary of man called Satan. And brothers and sisters, the reason why the Lord has brought us into this study of critical adversary, starting with number one, Satan, the chief adversary of them all, is to equip us with the grace to be overcomers. Because in this end time, the word overcome means you are going to face challenges and you are going to overcome those challenges. And so by the grace of the Lord in chapter 4, lesson 4 of this study on critical adversaries, we come to the dual mandate of Satan and his agents. I want you to pay attention. There's a, a two-fold mandate we need to bear in mind, and then we'll unpack it and make sure we receive all the Lord has for us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to receive your word. Your word is to equip us, is to arm us. Lord, we pray that every one of us shall receive the truth, the rema of the world. The, 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 the light shall come in, and it will lead to empowerment so that we'll be able to overcome that your name may be glorified in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, we need to uh, say something that we all must bear in mind. There is a place, just as Satan is a created being, he has a beginning as Lucifer. He also has an ending from his transmutation of from uh, Lucifer to Satan, the devil, the adversary, he has an end from the throne of grace where he used to live, was cast out, roaming around. Now he has an ending. That ending is not just hell. Hell is a temporary place. The ending is the lake of fire and brimstone he will be cast into, as Revelation chapter 20 tells us very clearly. And so, knowing that his fixed end is in that place of perpetual torment, in the lake of fire and brimstone, Satan and his cohorts, they devote a good proportion of their time on a dual mission. What is that dual mission? That's what one look to study today. The first one is to tempt, seduce, or drag as many human beings as possible to partake in the eternal torment in that lake of fire and brimstone which awaits them. You see, Satan hates mankind with a rabid hatred. And that place assigned to him and the demons that rebel with him, he wants as many human beings to end up there, to keep company. Then the second thing he does is to, the second part of the mandate is to make life as miserable, difficult, and hard as possible for those who escaped his grip by being redeemed. As if you're born again, you have escaped his grip from a judicial point of view, then he comes with attacks and all manner of things. The idea is to cause the life of such things to possibly be a reproach so that some of them will be tempted to seek solution from his agents to make them to bow before him even without knowing it or to just be a reproach to the name of the Lord. We're not going to expand those two concepts. And that's what we're going to do today in this lesson. Please, don't jump the gun. We are coming. Any area we didn't cover, we're coming. You know how the Lord deals with us in this commission. He gives us something. He begins to unpack it. So let's look at the first one. Tempt, seduce, or drag as many humans as possible to end up in the lake of fire and brimstone. As we said before, hell and the lake of fire, they were, they were, they were created for Satan's final place, the lake of fire, is for his eternal punishment. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 41, Yeshua said something very explicit. And then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Those demons who followed him in his rebellion, he was prepared for them. So fighting his war against mankind to the very end, Satan wants to see many people to join him and his cohorts 
And that is something important the Lord wants us to take note. That's why the Lord wants us to be resolute as human beings, not to be deceived. Not to be deceived. There are many people who ought to be saved, but he is deceiving them and they can't see. And that objective of the enemy must be clearly seen. We are told in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, if our gospel be hid, verse 3 and 4, is he to them that are perishing, whom the God of this world has blinded the eyes of them so that they won't believe. So the enemy has a, a goal to make people not to receive the gospel, not to hear. And then that's why the Lord said to people, you know, to, to really understand the way Satan operates. So within this ambit, some activities of Satan and his demons are unleashed against humanity. Number one, a negative operating environment which is inherently opposed to righteous living. From the day Satan deceived Eve and Adam and took the mantle of the world from them, he became the god of this world. From that day, that state in Eden, which was universally righteousness, peace, and joy, they lived at the behest of the Father, and they had everything the Lord had, every good thing was at their disposal. From that day that they fell, in Genesis 3, the sentence of hard labor pronounced upon humankind, womankind, you know, have to labor in hardness, pregnancy and all the issues involved man has to swear to eat you know to till the ground all those stuff so there's an atmosphere that is contrary to what was originally created for the air trim so satan is the god of this world at this time and so we're told in verse 19 of first john chapter 5 that we know we have elohim and the whole world the whole world lieth in wickedness the God of this world is blinded the eyes of people. And so, now, if you now want to know how he operates in this regard, we see that in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the world that Satan controls, the world that Satan rules, what are they? He names them three broad ways. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now, let's look at it carefully. Lust of the flesh. So Satan has a duty, I mean, has an assignment or a pattern of activating a desire to gratify the fleshly nature. So he wants people not to be led by the Spirit of God. And of course, we're talking about even unbelievers, human beings generally, he wants people to live by what they see, what they hear, what they touch, what they feel, what they taste. So, for that reason, they, there is the tendency to make wrong conclusions because those things that we desire because we saw them, they create problems that take people away from the Elohim. That's what happened on the day that Satan deceived Adam and Eve he, pro he brought about a craving in Eve for something that the Lord expressly said no. And he said, lust of the eyes. That is mainly what happened when she saw the fruit, saw the tree. And then pride of life, the tendency to feel greater or better than other people because of certain things you have or don't have. This is the world. The world is full of lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. People are always seeking more. How much is enough? People are seeking. People want to accumulate, accumulate. When they get what they think is a goal, they want more. So ambition to be, ambition to get, ambition to do, you know, becomes part of life. So that creates a negative operating environment in the sense that when you live by these three means, you cannot live by the Spirit. You cannot see the things of the Spirit. You cannot apprehend them. And so that is why that day that when Satan tempted Eve, look at the key where he got her. He said, For God doth know, verse 5, that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. 
When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, those three things came together. She took up the fruit thereof, did eat, gave us unto her husband, and he did eat. So this is what Satan is doing to human beings. Live by what you feel, what you desire. Live by what you see. Live by what you know will make you feel better than others. So, those saved, if Christians leave the high ground of spirituality, led by the Spirit in all things, and begin to live by their five carnal senses, or you know what will happen, they are in the bag of Satan already. If their lifestyle and devotions are carnal, based on what is now a global norm, what others are doing, whether it is a growing church by sight, by, by all the things, carnal things, it doesn't work. Men and brethren, if you look at Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to 9, it says, They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is not, the carnal mind is enmity against Elohim. It is not subject to the law of Elohim, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So even when somebody is born again, if you leave spiritual path and go into carnality, you can move. You can grow. So Satan creates an environment where people can do a lot of activities, but they can please God essentially. And that leads to, to the second broad way Satan does, which is to attack, torment, and instigate circumstances to make life hard, difficult, and not worth living, or cause people to be a reproach, you know, and to see whether Christians will be tempted to. Because most of the time, there are people around these agents whose job are to say, to suggest somewhere you go to get a solution. And most of the time, people fall into the hand of the wrong one. So Yeshua said in John 10, 10, the thief, the devil, covet not, but for to steal, they call him a thief. One who works surreptitiously, one who comes to take what doesn't belong to him, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Kill, steal, destroy. So those things that he does, we need to understand that their whole idea is to make life miserable. To make people not to enjoy the Elohim type of life, the Zoe life. And so some of them, we need to be able to discern what he is doing or what is just natural. What his hands are in, discernment is important. And that's where prayer of, you know, prayer of inquiry comes in. Lord, what's going on? Father, show me, reveal to me. And if you have the grace, the gift of discernment, you can see. You can know. And there are times when, in addition to prayer, you need to fast. Wait, something requires fasting. Because Matthew 17, 21, he says, How be it? This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. They are talking about you can by faith get anything you want. But there are things he say, Hey, they have deep tap roots. You need to pray and fast for them to go off. So, and then we may need to wage spiritual warfare in the whole gamut of it. And we're going to talk about spiritual warfare later. Okay? You know, in, the, in this series, we're going to go into depth of spiritual warfare that probably you limited yourself to Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to see there are much more than Ephesians 6 in spiritual warfare. So let's see some of the things Satan does in the area of trying to make life hard and difficult for people, including those who are born again. Number one, what is called generational causes. This is when there are proven cases of evil spells or things, developments upon a lineage, which limits the ability of those born therein to enjoy the abundant life of John 10, 10 b This may include, for instance, where there is so much premature deaths. Some places you go to, people hardly get to 45. Once they get to 45, between 45 and 50, the next thing is death. Premature death. One generation, two generation, three generation, four generation is just a normal thing. Sometimes it's only men. Sometimes it's women. Some are other conditions of real limitation that most people in the family seem to experience as a normal thing. So, where there are such things, if you are born again, your life should be different. 
because you are born into Yeshua. You are born into the family of Yahweh by the blood of Yeshua. The bloodline that was infested with generational causes is what part of what you have been redeemed from. Now you have a new bloodline, the bloodline of Yeshua Hamashiach. You shouldn't suffer the same thing as them. So what do you do? Enforce by faith your new stature as a son of the Most High. Enforce it by declaration. Enforce it by decree. Enforce it by the ordinance of the blood and the authority of the name of Yeshua. And never confess association with that evil trend that was upon the family. But in any case, there's something you need to do. I mean, Colossians 1, 12 to 14, Colossians 2, 6 to 13, the handwriting of ordinances that was against you and contrary to you, not just the letters of the law, like today we read Deuteronomy chapter 28, is terrible. It uh, say to Israel, this will come upon you if you do not obey me, men and brethren, we need to know that if you are Yeshua Hamashiach, the day he said it is finished, all, not just sins, all ordinances contrary to you and against you, including family bloodline, they were all laid upon him and he took it away. But do you believe? Do you believe radically enough to say, no way? But there's something here the Lord brought forth. Be sincere to yourself and to Elohim when you seek deliverance from generational causes. What do we mean? Supposing your great-grandfather was a highway man. Let's say you are from America. Let's say you are from a state, a tough state, a rugged state like Arizona or Oklahoma or even Texas. And their highway men operated very much in the 1800s. And here was a highway man who will burn down people's houses, loot their properties, take their wives and misuse them. And that was the life he lived. He accumulated money and money and money and money and even bought stakes in bank or even established a bank. And then here comes you. You are born again. You have part of that inheritance of, of all that stuff that he went through. And then you, are, you want to escape generational causes, but you are holding on to the assets. You hold assets. Do you know that the assets came with liabilities? And that you can actually redeem those assets from the, with the blood of the Lamb. That's true. But the Lord may also show you that there is a principle higher than just that one of, you know, faith and you continue holding. There may be a principle of you going to the history books and finding how, what this man did to some specific families and make a restitution. Engage in representational repentance. Yes. You can engage in representational repentance for something that has carried through in the family. Because some of those people who live terrible lives, one of the things you see about the, the people they, they begat was a particular thing, terrible thing, either premature death or whatever. So you may need to severe yourself from such. If you have the ability to get independent wealth, you can even give it all up. You can find the victims, compensate them, or if you can't find them, you can at least repent before the Lord and take it out of your life. Number two, systemic, systemic poverty. Poverty can be a function of bad national economy or laziness or poor choices, but it can also be an attack of demons assigned for that purpose. Men and brethren, don't be presumptuous. If there is systemic poverty in the family, no matter if people make, they just eat hand to mouth, just manage, struggle, they cannot, they can't live in a good place, they can't, nothing good. Men and brethren, Deal with it on all fronts because, as we saw in the case of Job, Satan attacked his finances, attacked his business. He didn't know it then. But we are privileged that we know. So systemic poverty can be a sign that the enemy has tied up so you cannot enjoy the abundant life. Medical cases. Three. Some medical conditions are a function of careless intake of food or drinks that are not suited for your body. A lot of people take sugar. Sugar is one of the most worthless things. It adds no value whatsoever. At a certain age, you don't need egg. At a certain age, you don't need milk. So certain things we eat occasion breakdown of health. So that is there. Normal wear and tear. You know, you work very hard, you can, you can push yourself. But some sicknesses are of demonic origin. 
just like the one of Job. His affliction was demonic. Satan afflicted him. So we need to know. You need to know. I mean, look at the, the, the maniac of, of the Gergesenes. You know, the man, the word of the one of God. Right? When the evil spirit were cast out, he was whole that moment. So there are certain things that are persistent, that have developed up roots that are not of the Lord. If a, if, if a family just gets things, struck by things like cancer and all that, you don't need to be careless and do as if you, you don't know the Bible. That's why the Lord is teaching us these things. Number four, lack of favor. I mean, the Lord has promised us favor as an inheritance from Him. If we love Him and live by His word, we have favor with Him and with people. But there are people who, no matter what they try, doors always slam before them interview they are called for if at all they are called at law for the interview before they know it they are screened out secretaries would allow them to see the bosses they're just like a cloak of favor upon them nothing works for them the enemy is at work the enemy has done that number five near success syndrome there are people who experience near success syndrome. They put in a, they have an idea, they package it, they put up a business plan, a proposal what to do. But you know what? They do and do and do like climbing the mountain just as they are about to get to the peak. Everything just comes crashing down. They try to put again, it comes crashing down. They run around in circle. It's called near success syndrome. It needs to break out of that limitation. And that can come by understanding that the enemy and his agents may be the one at work. Number six, it can affect those who are called, those who are not called to celibacy, because the calling is a ministry. The Lord can call one to celibacy, and if one does not have any affection for anything to do with marriage and all that stuff. But supposing somebody is not called, and people are not coming, suitors are not coming, male or female, as the case may be, you know, either a brother or a sister, and they are not coming at all, and even if they come, they are the wrong people, they do all kinds of things that show that this thing will not work. The enemy may be at work. And it's important that some people to understand that some people may be distracted by assigned demons. Some demons that speak into their ear. Don't go, don't go, don't go. And some people, the enemy just puts a mask on them. And so when the people who are supposed to suit us come, they don't see them as a woman to marry or as a man to marry. All they see is something very, very gross. Number seven, things like physical, you know, things like barrenness, infertility, miscarriages that cannot be explained. It can be induced by attack of demons assigned by Satan. Number eight, being involved in many cases of inexplicable accidents. Inexplicable, just suddenly. It's like you saw a lion. You like he saw it, an elephant run across the road and he swerve and all that. And yet there was no elephant. It's made with demonic things projected. It could be in the home, it could be in the office or road. Fire you can't explain where. Number nine, where there are strong hindrances to the growth of ministry. Ministry. You labor, you sweat, you pray, you fast, you do what you're supposed to do. You are not living in sin, but it just looks like Nothing works. Nothing moves. Yeah. Number 10. When children are given to rebellion or resistance to authority due to demonic manipulation, it can happen. And the enemy is manipulating people not to get the best of their parents, making them headstrong and difficult, rebellious. Say, you know what? It could be the enemy at work. Number 11. When brethren in congregations you lead do not seem to get it. You preach, you preach, you teach. They don't seem to get it. What is happening? It could be the enemy. Remember in the book of Matthew 13, verse 19, when one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catch it away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives it by the wayside. So you can hear a word, and if you didn't grab it when it was being taught, the enemy can just come, assign a demon who takes it away. Twelve. When those you bless, you do well for them, and they pay you back with evil, evil speech, evil attitude, evil actions conspire against you, you know, do, trying to pull down what you're doing that has been a blessing to them, 
That could be satanic attack. It could be agents of darkness manipulating them. Or number 13, licking pockets. You struggle, the Lord blesses you, you get money, but you can't account for it. You can't say, this is what I did with it or that. It just seemed to grow wings and fly away. Then I'm brethren. 14, repeated destruction of material assets through various means like freak weather. Just like that. Phew, hurricane, phew, tornado. That is it. And maybe you didn't even do proper insurance. This all. 15, low self-esteem or worldliness. Those two. You don't feel who you are in Yeshua, who is in you. And because you don't feel it, you don't sense it, you don't know it, it makes you feel low when you are with people of the world, when you should know your end, knowing your end, knowing where you are going, is supposed to constantly make you grateful, but you look at them, it looks like their world is better, their own is there, and this can be something manipulated against Satan. This list is not exhaustive. The Lord wants us to know the truth that will make us free. And we have many things we need to understand. That until Adam and Eve, I mean from the day Adam and Eve sinned, a culture has been in the world. And until the time when Yeshua will come to restore all things on the earth dream, things may not work. But then we need to come to a place where we first ask ourselves, is there anything that is from me? Do I need to change my lifestyle, my diet, my attitude? If that is so, take responsibility. If there's something you need to release also, forgive somebody. Because when you don't forgive, you actually imprison yourself. So those are things you can check. And then if you have been blessed, maybe your parents train you in school. They, they, like in Africa, they sold what they have to give you training. Now, the Lord has blessed you. You are in the Western world. You are living well. And your parents are still suffering. You know what? You are giving permission to Satan to execute an evil ordinance against you. Because Ephesians 6, 1 to 3 says, you know, honor your father and mother. It's the first command with a promise that it may be well with you and that it may live long on the earth. So sometimes you need to check up, not the enemy. You check up whether there's anything, any lifestyle. Are you taking care of the one that trained you, the one that was or your parents or your uncle that invested in your, your upbringing. You know what? It's important. So also, you know, Galatians 6 says, from verse 6 to 9 also, the spiritual leaders, those who minister to you, bless you, empower you, do you know that you have a duty in the Lord to take care of them as much as lies in you? So what we're saying is that don't just blame the devil for everything. There are things that require us to make some adjustments and make sure we get it right. By way of assignment, kindly share five things you learned from this lesson. This evening, by the grace of the Lord, we continue. We continue to build up to the next uh, number, lesson number five, and to see certain things. Maybe this is the one way to say certain things. If you see them, you know, you know that the enemy is at work also, and the way he manipulates. Let's pray. And please share the video. Encourage other people to also share find people in groups wherever you are let's get understanding the lord wants to empower us you shall know the truth the truth you know shall set you free father in heaven i pray this shall be so that the truth you have released will enable your people to come to the place where we we understand the work of the enemy and we do not allow him to continue but we walk in victory based on the tools you have given to us. Have your way, sovereign rule of the universe. Yeshua Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching, and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday, all the way to Sunday, every day, by about 10.30 a.m. UK time. And that's the same at Nigerian time. And you, it's either Apostle George, Monday to Friday uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace, uh, Friday to Sunday. And then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website, 
www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be do the master class you can go to www.kingdombooksclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.